Hello and welcome watch fam, my name is Panda. Today we have the unboxing of the Invicta Pro Diver. I, I know it's a watch that's kind of been hated in the world, but I just decided to pick it up from Amazon Prime when it was on sale for under 50 US and I thought, you know, why the heck not? And I have it right here, still in the Amazon packaging. Coming right up after this intro. This in front of me is the Invicta Pro Diver, model number 8926OB. It came directly from Amazon in this white box. So uh, I guess it's a protective packaging within the other bag it had. And uh, it, just before I start, let's do a quick wristwatch check. I have the XKX007 in front of me on a NATO strap, uh, royal belly of the Australian Strap Co. I think it was the the website I bought it from. Anyways, I'll leave a link down below so that you guys can check it out. And without further ado, let's unbox this bad boy. Ooh. Wow, okay, that that's a really nice box for the price range. I cannot deny that. Now keep in mind, I'm gonna re remind you guys that the price range of this watch uh, constantly because I got it for 83 Australian dollars and it is uh, during Amazon Prime and I believe it was 50 US approximately or under even. On this box is, I don't know what this material, it's very soft, it's very plush. Uh, and in the front there is an embossed, I think it's called embossed logo where it kind of, it's raised logo of the Invicta name. Let's open this bad boy up. Ooh. Okay. So. It's, I thought it would be like a, um, it looked really kind of soft and velvety, but it's not. It's, I wonder what it is. It's like a fabric of some sort in here. Uh, the, the opening action is very good. It's like a, a strong box, but you guys don't care about the box. Let's see what this is first of all. It is a warranty and information card. Uh, I don't think we need that. Let's just chuck it there. And voila, here is the watch in question. Looks like it's got a little bit of power probably from the movement. And uh, here's the watch. It actually, it doesn't, you know what, seriously, 50 bucks US, it doesn't feel that cheap. <laughs> it sounds horrible, but you know, like it was a cheap buy. Look, let's be honest, you know. Um, and, and people love to hate this watch, but so far the Oyster bracelet looks pretty good. It's like a brushed on the outside and then polished in the middle now people not a lot of people like that um but i don't mind it it looks it, it looks um the the price it looks the gig i should say uh and here is a little tag that it comes with I'm not sure what the qr code is you guys can go check it out if you can scan it uh with the little logo so let's go and uh, rip the plastic now, i know i know you guys like the ripping of the plastic uh at least from other other watch channels that i've been viewing. So I'm going to leave that in this box here. It's, it's an added struggle to um, remove, is there a button here? No, there isn't. Okay, so the claps you can just pop open. So it, it's a claps, press claps, it's, it's, it is feels pretty cheap I gotta say. Uh, but it is to be expected for the price. Um, let's get rid of the rest of the plastic. The dial is not bad. The dial, for what it is, is, is quite nicely polished. Um, I'll just need to check the alignment of everything. The Cyclops lens is, is good. It works well. I mean, it does the job. Let, let's remove the plastic first. I'll get to that. It's actually really, really hard. When I unbox the, the Seiko, it was substantially easier than this. I mean, the, the ripping of the plastic. The ceremonious reduction of this was much easier so much oh what's this for so there's an arrow here i'm not sure what the arrow means is there an easy way to do this wait hang on oh okay <laughs> oh, what okay there was an easy way to do it. it wasn't it was oh my gosh okay well there it is um okay now that i've removed the plastic the, the bracelet feels very very cheap i can i can actually feel Kind of hollowish looking. Let me let me just close the clasp first. 
Oh, yep, that that click is really bad. Um, it's hard to do. It's hard to do. I would say. Very, very. How would you say it? the best way to say it is that it's very, very loose. And I'll go back to the bezel now. The bezel was so hard to turn. It's it's virtually it's virtually impossible to turn. Look at that. What in the name is the, is this a defect? It's impossible. Anyways, as I was saying, the bracelet feels a little cheap. It looks nice, but it's a little cheap. Um, so I'm going to be changing that. Now, the clasp here, it feels very like very flimsy to come off. But luckily, this part is very ridiculously hard to get the actual clasp off. So that I can say that's a plus for some people, but could be a negative to certain other people because it's, oh, you see that? It's, it's actually quite hard. Now another thing to note is that for a fifty-ish, fifty-five dollar, fifty-ish dollar um, watch, it's got a display case back. Um, oh, and I forgot to remove that plastic. Let me just do that. Get the case back. It's really, really nice. And on the actual pendulum, uh, it, it's you know has that really nice Invicta yellow uh, and and some inscription on it. Let me let me see if I can read it. Um, it says Invicta Watch Group. So this is once again an Invicta Pro Diver, model number 8960B. Uh, in terms of the actual case, it is a 40mm I believe, 40mm case. And as you obviously everyone would know by now, this is a homage to the Rolex Submariner as you can tell by the bezel as well as um, the Mercedes hands and the placements of each of the dial. So uh, it, it is close obviously with the Cyclops lens. You could mistaken this from, from afar that it is a uh, Submariner and I, I think that's kind of the point they're going for. Now um, would you buy this to place a Submariner? No. It's not even remotely close. Everything about it feels slightly cheaper than it should. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's this really big Invicta logo on the side, which I think it's a little obnoxious. That's completely up to you. It is a subjective thing. Uh, for me, I, th I would really rather remove it, uh, but I'm probably not going to spend too much uh, effort doing that. Now, the other thing is that the lug width is 20 millimeters. Um, lug to what? Lug, uh, you know what I need to do? I need to get a, a measurement thing for lug to a lug, but my understanding will be is that it's about 46 give or take. Um, and inside, the good thing, the very good thing about this watch is that the movement, the movement here is a Seiko NH35. So it is uh, hackable, it's hand, uh, can be hand wound, um, and uh, it's an automatic watch as you can see. So let me see, is this a, it's a threaded crown. Wow, man, this is. Okay, I, that just upped it, <laughs> upped it a notch a little bit. For a 50-ish dollar USD uh, watch, I threw it a crown, you know? Uh, automatic watch, hand wound, hackable. Let's see if it's hackable. Oh, as you see, the second hand says stop. So it's a hackable, hackable watch. Is it look? Let's push it all back in. First position should be date. Oh, there you go. That's the date change. It's a quick set. Uh, second position is the hours as you can see. Now how do I hand wind this? Oh, hand wound is the uh, neutral position. Uh, my biggest gripe is still the bezel. Uh, it's virtually like you gotta have some uh, ridiculous amount of strength to turn that. Um, and I mean it sounds satisfying but, but there is virtually no play. So, uh, so for some people the bezel being that hard to wound potentially be a positive. For me, it's a negative thing purely because I kind of like playing with the bezel a bit. Threading is very easy. It's already locked in. Um, now, the last thing to do is to compare it with my SKX 007. Um, oh, my, my shirt is actually quite tight, so. Um, so that's the comparison in size. Uh, note that because it's a NATO strap, it, it does stick up a bit because of you know how it is um but yeah it's a 40 mil it feels it actually feels a bit smaller um than my seiko but that's how it looks side by side now 
I'm a huge fan of the SKX007, so obviously this is still my pick. However, it's not bad looking for the price, and for what you get out of it, it it's I honestly speaking for that price range is punching above its weight. Um, whether you can use this as a um, homage, if you can call that, uh, as a Rolex replacement, that is completely up to you. But it does have the look. And uh, is this going to replace the <laughs> Submariner? No! Of course not. Of course it won't. Is this, would this satisfy your itch to get a Rolex? It will not. I, I don't think for me, for a second there, I'll, I'll, I'll stop buying a roll, um, stop buying some Ramers, Submariners uh, for an Invicta Pro Dubber, I will not. But it is not a bad looking watch, purely because it does look like the Submariner. That's my uh, initial impression of the watch. Welcome back guys, so um, my, that was my first in, uh, impression and the unboxing of the Invicta Pro Diver. This watch is not as bad as people say, look, you gotta keep in mind the price point and if this watch can bring people into horology and into watch collecting and, and kind of joining the club, I feel like it's a very cheap entry price you can call that with all things aside the main thing that pisses you off is that it's a homage other than that this watch has a very very solid movement in it it is a japanese seiko nh35a it's hackable it's hand winding it's got a screw down crown um i didn't test the loom i probably should have done that but uh i i don't think it's going to be that great the the actual indices is very very small so the amount of loom you're going to get is not going to be incredible um i know it's a uh, like 200, uh, you know, 200 meters of water resistance, but you know you're not really going to go diving with a 50, 60 dollar watch. Um, in terms of the Cyclops lens, um, it just depends whether you personally like it or not. Now, for me, I think it's a fine watch. I'm going to wear it. I'm going to test it out if um, if it works well with the bezel. I mean, biggest gripe for me is the bezel. If um, the bezel is a bit looser, maybe I got to break it in for a year or two. <laughs> And it'll, it'll turn better because um, I'm the VGD type of guy. The branding on the edge of the case is very obnoxious. You can't see it here. Um, I've turned off the focus thing. Um, and I, I personally like the counterweight on, on the second hand. It's got the Invicta logo on the counterweight. Some people think it's, it's a bit too much. I don't think so. So, end of the day, should you buy it? If you haven't got, if you this is the first watch that you should get. Um, it, it probably shouldn't be the first watch you get. But if budget is a problem, then this is a good way to start. Um, I would definitely recommend other, other divers. I recommend the, obviously the SKX, my currently my favorite watch, double seven or double nine, whatever one you want. But just get the SKX series if you can get your hands on it. If not, just get the new Seiko fives. Um, otherwise, you can check out the Seiko uh, SNK eight hundred nine as a, a starter watch because that's only one hundred and thirty Australian, about ninety American. Um, but it is not a homage. It's its own design. It's a. It's got a. It's got a. You can call it a lesser movement. 7s26. So it's not hand wide. It's not hackable. Anyways, thanks for uh, watching the video. If you liked it, please like the video. If you've got any comments and uh, criticism of mistakes I've made, feel free to let me know. I'm still getting better. I'm trying to understand watch horology a lot better. Fingers crossed, I'll get there. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. I will continue to do more watches. The next one I'm doing is. Uh, I think it's a Saab, Sabo, sorry, the Seiko Alpinus, Sabo 17, so keep an eye on that uh, and hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, my name is Panda uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.